Today is Tuesday, August 9th. We'll tell you about the FBI searching former President Trump's home, what agents were looking for, and what Trump has to say about it. Also, how America's biggest aid package yet could help Ukraine, and which primary elections up north are getting a lot of attention today. Plus, which companies are getting another boost from small-time investors on Reddit, where executives are having to do some heavy lifting in the middle of a staffing shortage, and how Elvis Presley fans are coming together to honor the king this week. We'll tell you those stories and more news to know. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. For the first time in American history, the FBI has raided a former president's home. Former President Trump put out a statement confirming the search at his Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida, calling it not necessary or appropriate. Since then, sources have told news outlets like the AP and New York Times it was all part of an investigation into whether Trump took classified records from the White House, which would be against the law. And agents reportedly seized boxes full of documents. For now, Trump has not been charged with a crime. And the former president says he's been cooperating with the government about the missing records. Trump and his supporters also say this is all part of a partisan effort to keep him from winning another term in office in 2024. Though, keep in mind, the current FBI director was appointed by Trump. So far, the FBI has not said anything about this raid, at least not publicly. By the way, this is separate from another investigation happening at the Justice Department into whether Trump and his allies tried to undo the results of the 2020 election, in part with the Capitol riot. To be continued. Three white men found guilty for killing a black man in a racist attack faced the victim's family this week, and two of them did something they haven't done before now, said Sari. This was a case that sparked outrage around the country a couple of years ago when a father, son, and their neighbor chased down 25-year-old Ahmad Arbery, shot him, and killed him. You'll remember they were already convicted of murder and sentenced to life in prison on the state level. Then came a federal trial where they were all found guilty of hate crimes. And that's what they were sentenced for this week. Travis and Greg McMichael were both given another life sentence without the possibility of parole. Their neighbor, William Bryan, got 35 years, and parole is possible for him since he did not use a gun and turned video of the attack over to law enforcement. The men do have a couple of weeks to appeal, but it's not clear if they will. In court, Greg McMichael and William Bryan told Arbery's family they never meant things to turn out this way. The U.S. Attorney General said this proves that, quote, hate crimes have no place in our country. The United States is giving Ukraine a $1 billion boost in firepower, making this the biggest weapon shipment the Pentagon has sent so far. It includes rockets, ammunition, and a lot of other equipment from the American stockpiles. This all comes as Ukraine is determined to push Russian troops out of the South. It won't be easy, since in recent days, Russia has been moving troops and equipment towards southern port cities. But Ukraine is vowing to keep fighting and says America's contributions are making a big difference. This is actually the 18th time the U.S. has given Ukraine equipment from the Defense Department stocks this year alone, meaning the U.S. has given Ukraine nearly $10 billion in military aid, and much more is expected before this war is over. Well, this week, the Bidens witnessed the damage from the worst flooding in Kentucky's history. The president and first lady went to the state to meet with first responders and families who lost everything in recent floods. Sadly, at least 37 people have died in this natural disaster, and more are still missing. Entire homes were washed away, and many more were so badly damaged they're now unlivable. President Biden promised the federal government would give Kentucky everything it needs to recover from the devastation. The state's Republican politicians don't always see eye to eye with Biden, but they say this disaster has given them something to rally around and fix together. Already, FEMA has given more than $3 million in relief funds and sent in hundreds of rescue personnel. But unfortunately, things could get worse soon. Another round of storms is expected to hit Kentucky this afternoon and again tomorrow, possibly causing even more flooding. To be continued. Well, it's time for Americans up north to head to the polls. Four more states are holding primary elections today. Wisconsin, Minnesota, Connecticut, and Vermont. And there are a few races political analysts are keeping their eyes on. For starters, Wisconsin, where two Republicans running for governor have big-name endorsements. One is backed by former President Trump, the other by former Vice President Pence. Over in Vermont, voters are choosing a replacement for the longest-serving member of the Senate, since Senator Patrick Leahy is retiring. 
In Minnesota, there's another Democrat taking on current Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, and crime has been the big focus of that primary. While Omar was behind a movement to defund the police, her competitor helped defeat efforts to replace the Minneapolis PD as a council member. And finally, there's Connecticut. Republicans are vying for the chance to take on Democratic Senator Richard Blumenthal, even though it's been roughly three decades since Connecticut had a Republican in the U.S. Senate. Of course, those are just a few of the key races on the ballots today. Ten more states will have primaries coming up before the big midterm elections this fall. All right, we have much more news for you still ahead. But first, a quick break for our sponsor, Thrive Cosmetics. I'm excited to tell you about Thrive Cosmetics, where you can get great beauty and skincare products made with clean ingredients. I really appreciate knowing that their products never have parabens, sulfates, or phthalates. They're certified 100% vegan and cruelty-free. And I love their products. Specifically, I use the Liquid Balm Lip Treatment all the time. It feels really nice on, it looks great as a shiny, clear gloss, and it keeps my lips nice and moisturized. I just keep it in my purse all the time now, and I'm planning to get their exfoliating lip scrub next. I also like the Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara. It's a bestseller, and it has 20,000 five-star reviews for a reason. And no matter what products you buy from Thrive Cosmetics, here's an added bonus. Cause is in their name on purpose. Every purchase supports organizations that help communities thrive. Their mission is called Bigger Than Beauty, and it supports a variety of causes. Now is a great time to try Thrive Cosmetics for yourself. Right now, you can get 15% off your first order when you visit thrivecosmetics.com slash newsworthy. That's Thrive Cosmetics, C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash newsworthy for 15% off your first order. The so-called meme stock craze is back, and the individual investors on the internet seem to be giving some of the same companies a boost once again. Shares of companies that would typically be struggling were instead soaring yesterday. Bed Bath & Beyond stock was up 40%. Movie theater chain AMC, 16%. And video game retailer GameStop, 12%. Remember, this meme stock frenzy started last year. It's essentially people on Reddit and other social media sites banding together to drive up certain stock prices. In a major media merger, Cox Enterprises will buy digital news site Axios for $525 million. It makes Axios one of the few digital news sites to sell for more than a half a billion in the past decade. Axios focuses on politics, business, and more recently, local news. Whereas Cox is a family-owned conglomerate that got its start in local newspapers. The founders of Axios will stay on to run the site's editorial decisions and operations. The deal is expected to close in a few weeks if regulators give it the okay. The CEO of a major airline is asking its senior executives to take on more than their usual duties and start handling luggage. We're talking about Australian airline Qantas. And it's all because of a worker shortage. The airline says it needs at least 100 managers to work at airports in Australia's largest cities, Sydney and Melbourne. They'll have to scan bags, load luggage on and off flights, and drive bags to and from the tarmac. There are a few reasons why Qantas is doing this. The biggest one? They're struggling to hire back baggage handlers after about 1,600 of them were laid off during pandemic lockdowns. And these days, demand is surging. It's also winter in Australia right now, so there's a surge of new COVID and flu cases. Qantas has been dealing with delayed and canceled flights, long lines, and lost baggage. So the bosses are stepping up. The company hopes more help with luggage for just the next few months will get things running smoothly once again. The airline is also planning to scale back the number of flights it offers. Actress and singer Olivia Newton-John, best known for her role in Grease, has died at the age of 73. Her husband says she passed away peacefully with family and friends by her side after a long battle with breast cancer. Over her career, she won four Grammy Awards, including Video of the Year, for her steamy song Physical. Newton-John battled cancer on and off for 30 years. She established the Olivia Newton-John Foundation Fund for Breast Cancer Research and a Wellness Center in Australia. Her husband called her a symbol of triumph and hope for sharing her battle with others. Celebrity tributes have been pouring in, too, including from Greece co-star John Travolta, who posted on Instagram, quote, Yours from the first moment I saw you and forever. You're Danny. You're John. It's time to honor the life of the king of rock and roll. Elvis Week kicks off today since we're closing in on 45 years since Elvis Presley's death. Tens of thousands of fans are expected to come to Memphis from all over the world. There, they can visit Elvis's famous mansion, Graceland. They'll also see concerts, including, of course, Elvis impersonators and a lot more. But you don't have to be in Memphis to check this stuff out. 
There will also be a virtual Elvis week with some of the in-person events live streamed, as well as an Elvis impersonator contest, a pre-recorded tour of Graceland, and interview sessions with some of Elvis's old friends. You can buy tickets to either in-person or virtual Elvis week online. That's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Trivia Tuesday, when we ask a different trivia question every week. But first, this podcast is sponsored by ZocDoc. Finding and booking a doctor who's right for you doesn't need to be a terrible experience. Will they take your insurance, understand your needs, or be available when you can see them? With ZocDoc, the answer can be a refreshingly pain-free yes. No more wasting time tracking down your brother's cash-only chiropractor or the dentist your coworker recommended but who's actually out of your network. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. The verified patient reviews allow you to see what other real humans had to say about their visit. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc, and I'm one of them. And now, so is the executive producer of this show who recently said she had a great experience with ZocDoc. So whenever you need to find and book a doctor, go to ZocDoc.com newsworthy and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc, Z-O-C-D-O-C, ZocDoc.com slash newsworthy. That's ZocDoc.com slash newsworthy. Okay, now back to Trivia Tuesday. Today's trivia question is, what is the best-selling album of all time in the United States? You can answer the question and play along with us over on Instagram. You'll find this trivia question and today's news quiz in our stories. Simply search Newsworthy Pod on Instagram to find and follow us. As for last week's trivia question, where is the location of the hottest temperature ever recorded on Earth? The answer is Death Valley, California. The World Meteorological Organization says the highest temperature ever recorded there or anywhere was 134 degrees Fahrenheit on July 10, 1913. And it's gotten close a few times after that. For example, Death Valley hit 130 degrees Fahrenheit in August of 2020 and June of 2021. The National Park Service says it gets so hot there because of the geography and lack of water. Since it's surrounded by mountain ranges, the valley can trap heat. And on average, less than two inches of rain falls there each year. Of course, there are a lot of other hot spots on Earth. Here in the U.S., Arizona has recorded the second highest temperature at 128 degrees. But all 50 states have seen temps in the triple digits. Well, thank you so much for listening today. Be sure to hit the subscribe or follow button in your podcast app so you can find new episodes easily. We appreciate you making us part of your every day. We'll be back with another news roundup tomorrow morning. So for now, have a great day. 